we're going to create an experiment and some realistic looking data for that experiment. So it's a simple experiment. There are two conditions. Let's call them self and other. Could be like a face recognition task or something. And we're going to simulate data for 20 participants. And I'm using OpenOffice Calc, but you could use Microsoft Excel. Um, and there may be other, other software that can do this as well. So to create realistic looking data, it's really useful to use the, the random function in Calc or Excel. You can ask it to create a number between 0 and 1 that is completely random. So you just put it in and it, it creates a single number. And then you can use that number to then create realistic looking data. So let's put the first participant's data in. So you just put equals rand and then two brackets like that. And that gives you a random number between 0 and 1. And if you refresh the data by pressing F9, you'll see that this number just changes randomly all the time. Yeah, so that's a good example. That's an example participant. And the average will be 0 0.5 across all your participants. Um, yeah. But each one is completely random. So you can copy that down. So you now have 20 different random numbers for each participant. And that's for the self condition. And you could copy that across for the other condition. And now you've got two completely sets of random numbers. And that's fine if you want to simulate there being, for example, no difference between your two conditions. But how can you add a small difference between your conditions? Well, you can do that by just adding or subtracting a small number from the other numbers. So you can do random. Let's do minus 0 0.3, for example. And then if you copy that down for the other. So what this is going to do is produce a load of random numbers for the self condition with an average of about 0 0.5. And then a whole load of random numbers for the other condition. And the average for that will be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3. So your, your effect size, you're simulating an effect size, a difference between the conditions of 0 0.3. And although they're all random numbers, most of the time you'll get quite a big difference, a statistical difference between the two conditions. And on average, that difference will be 0 0.3, but there'll be a lot of random variability with it. And you can <clears throat> you can do all sorts of things to change the, the number, the particular number. So you could, um, for example, add 10 to every to every score. And that then shifts all the numbers up to be about around 10. So one will have an average of 10.5, and the other condition will have an average of 10.2. And if you want to increase the amount of randomness, you can sort of multiply the, the random number. But essentially, you can create any sensible looking kind of numbers for your experiment, your fake experiment, just by using the random function and adding or subtracting the differences you want between conditions. And for the rest of this example, we're going to use this minus 0.3 effect size. And this is a, an experiment with two conditions called self and other and 20 participants. It's a within participant design, so repeated measures. We're going to calculate some very simple statistics and then we're going to plot some very simple graphs. These numbers are just random numbers with a slight twist, but they're just two conditions. And it's important that each person, each individual person, is in an individual row. So all the data for participant one are in one row, all the data for participant four are in another row, etc. I'm going to use formulas as far as possible so that I don't have any copy and paste errors. Uh, and I'm going to show you what I do every time I process some data. So the first thing is just to start with some simple formulae. So let's start with the number of subjects. And the formula for that in Excel is equals count and then you select the range of data that you want. When I'm selecting a range I always choose one more row at the end of the range and that means that in future I can add rows quite easily and the, the range will expand 
to, to give me more rows. Now there's too many decimal places here, I'm just going to remove those. So that's just the number of subjects we've got in our experiment. Next simple simple thing we're going to do is the mean and the formula for that is equals average select the range press enter. Great, now the standard deviation equals STDEV now Excel gives you three options for the standard deviation the old one equals STDEV is the right one um, S, if you have a dot P after it, it's the wrong one, and a dot S is okay as well. So you want the sample standard deviation. Excel often allows you to put the population standard deviation in, but that is almost never useful in a statistical sense. So STDV, select the range. Now these numbers are looking pretty messy, so I'm going to reduce the number of decimal places on this. I usually go for three significant figures, which is not the same as three decimal places. It means you have three numbers that are giving you information about the size of your number. So you ignore zeros before and zeros after and just look at the three significant numbers in the middle of the number that are useful. So there's the number of subjects, the mean, the standard deviation. The next very useful thing is the standard error. SE. And the formula for that, there's no formula in Excel, but the formula for that is very simple. It's the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of participants. We're also going to calculate a 95% confidence interval. And to do that, we need what's called the critical T value. You can call it T crit. And that's the, the t-test statistics, which corresponds to a 5% p-value in the data. So there's a formula for calculating the critical t-value, and that's t-inv equals t-inv. The probability you want, we want 5%. And the degrees of freedom, and that's number of subjects, minus 1. So there's our critical t-value now. So for a t-test to be significant, you need the t-value to be just over 2 in this sample of 20. And the 95% confidence interval is simply the standard error multiplied by the critical t-value. So the confidence interval is always bigger than the standard error, usually about twice as big. So that now gives us all the data we need to, to produce some nice graphs with some nice error bars. A neat thing you can do in Excel, and the reason it's good to use formulas, is you can just copy all the formulas across, like this, and then the ranges should move across with the formula. So just when you copy formulas, check, check that the ranges are correct. I'm pressing F2 to edit each cell. Excellent. Now because this is a between participants design, some of the most useful numbers are actually the differences between participants. So not the raw data, but the differences between conditions within the participant. I'm going to call that the difference, self minus other. And I'll put that in a formula, equals self minus other. Copy that down. So now we've got 20 differences between participants. And again, I'm going to copy those formulae across. So now we have statistics on the raw data and then statistics on the differences between the two conditions and those are really useful as I'll show you now. Because this is a simple experimental design there's two conditions one group we're going to do a simple t-test to look at the differences between conditions and in the t-test you'll have a p-value and a t-score. So let's calculate the p-value using Excel's formula you can do equals t-test, select the range for data 1, the range for data 2, 
the number of tails you want, and two is the recommended number, unless you have a very clear prediction. And then the type of the t-test, because we've got a within sample, repeated measures design, it's type 1. And that gives us a p-value of 0 0.0041, which is significant. And that tells us that there's a real, or there's a difference between these two conditions, a quite a large difference. And you can get the t-test statistic associated with that by doing t-inv again. Get the probability and then the degrees of freedom. So it's a large t-score. These are random numbers, but I've tweaked them so that you'll usually get a significant effect. Now the reason I've calculated the different scores and the reason I've calculated all these statistics on the different scores is that you can see by calculating all of these whether you've got everything correct. So it's like a checksum or a validation step. It also teaches you a lot about the t-test because you can find out what exactly the t-test is. So you can calculate the t-test by using these different scores and very simply it's the mean difference divided by the standard error of the difference. As you can see, those are the same numbers. The t statistic is the mean difference divided by the standard error of the difference. And it's very useful in all of these cases when plotting error bars, when plotting graphs. And just to do a further check, you can do the get the p-value that corresponds to that t-value by doing t dist, the degrees of freedom, and then the mode again, the two-tailed test. And there's our p-value. If these numbers match up, you know that what you've done on the left side of this sheet matches up with what you've done on the right side of the sheet, because Microsoft Excel's own formula are corresponding with your own calculations. Very good. The next step is to draw a graph.